morning we're in Derbyshire today I've got uh, Philip with me today and he's very very kindly gonna lend some of his local expertise so what we're doing today um, we're gonna be having a look at the old the old tramway that runs from from Kreich get that right it's Kreich Kreich, Kreich, yeah. Kreich down to uh, down to Ambergate so there is two tramways that go down um, down towards towards is it, it's the canal and the railway isn't it yeah, down at Ambergate yeah. you've got the got this one we're going to be looking on today the claycross railway company uh, and then we've got the other one that goes through uh, through fritchley so we're just looking at the one that clay cross company tramway today so we're, we're starting up here kreich tramway museum the line's just underneath us there and this quarry here is this cliff quarry cliff quarry, yeah. cliff quarry. so this is where our tramway that we're going to be following today would have started so we have got tramway here. It's not the original tramway. It's a full, full-scale tramway. This one, but um, well, this is where it would have fanned out into the quarry, and you can see the quarry faces straight in front of us there. The name George Stevenson and his son Robert need little introduction in the railway world. From humble beginnings, George Stevenson started the Clay Cross Company in around 1838. In 1840, he started to assemble a tramway that would take limestone from the quarries above the Derbyshire village of Kreich down to the lineworks at Ambergate. So I've just highlighted the line that we're going to be looking at today that originates from the cliff quarry to the north of Kreich. So before we get started, just a little bit of history. The line opened in 1841 and survived for 116 years. The quarry closed in 1957 along with the tramway down to Ambergate. As we'll see in the 60 plus years that followed, various sections of the route have been lost, other sections have been taken over for other purposes and other sections preserved for future generations. So the railway meanders along on a relatively level through the village of Kreich, passing through two tunnels before literally falling off the end of the world down an incline, which led to the railway to be commonly known as the Steep. So we're only about 200 yards up from the end of the tramway museum, just up there. So this is the tramway down there. It's like it's being adopted, some kind of greenery or someone's garden now. So we just stood on top of a little bridge and down there, it's all infilled. Yeah, someone's claimed that, haven't they? There's a, yeah. there's a water butt down there. Yeah, it's someone's backyard now, isn't it? Yeah, nice retaining wall leading up to it, but you can't really see. Careful, someone's garden here. Yeah. Yeah, so that's where the bridge used to be. So we're now going to look at an early deviation of the tramway. So for this next little section, I'll refer you to a map that I found on one of the notice boards in the village. And this shows a short branch to the church quarry in Kreich. Now this branch doesn't seem to appear on any National Library of Scotland maps or rail map online. Information's a little scarce so I don't know when it opened or ceased and other than a few bridges has been absorbed into someone's private driveway and a housing estate. So I've just added a red line on the rail map online just to show the route and those blue crosses are a tunnel and a bridge that I'm going to show you photographs of now. So this is a little tunnel underneath Cromford Road um, that goes into Church wow. Quarry. Now I am stood on a public footpath here. And on that public footpath is underneath is somebody's driveway and, uh, and garden. But um, we're stood on a little bridge and that's the little bridge taken from Cromford Road. So forgive the blurry screen grab from Google Maps, but you can access that tunnel and that bridge down that little passageway there off Wheatsheaf Lane. And the route of the tramway towards that tunnel is now a private driveway. But I think that's a fascinating bit of history just nestled away in the village. Like 
so we're on Jeffrey's Lane now again just what 100 200 yards down from that last bridge and you're gonna have to take gonna have to take his word for it here but there's the there's the old trap bed of the tramway down there it's been infilled with garden waste and whatnot over the years so it's risen up quite a bit but we've got the old bridge just underneath here buried under all this rubbish and if you can see the brickwork there through it so there's a lot of stuff missing in uh, in this little little village this little town but there's all these little things you, you come across like this so the the, uh, the tramway would have gone over the top of this it's uh it's kind of sandwiched by by houses these days but look at that little archway how ornate those coping stones are as well So the line's coming right across us here. This is this is marketplace, and this is the scene of a quite a substantial bridge. Continuing a very short distance through Kreitch, and we meet the site of our first tunnel. And at 70 yards long, it's only a short one. The southern portal still exists but is bricked up. It is on private land so it's not openly accessible to view but I do know of other videos knocking around that have been able to investigate the portal further. The northern portal proved to be a bit more elusive. There is a wall above the portal still visible but the portal appears to be buried deep beneath a communal parking area. Its status and current condition isn't really known. So we're moving southwards on the line now, so I'll just show you whereabouts we are now. And we're just about to cross over Chadwick Nick Lane. So we've come up the line only about half a mile, if that, to Chadwick Nick. We've got a, in the trees there, an old, old engine shed. So I've just scouted into the woods and we've got a bit of a closer look at this good shed. Just scrambling down the embankment now. So I believe this side where we stood here was the track bedside of the good shed. And that, some old rails sticking out there. Throated with barbed wire fence uh, to the left hand side here. Don't think we'll be able to get any further that way. But it's certainly very close to being overtaken by nature in those trees now. Lovely smell of wild garlic in here, which reminds me I've got lasagna for tea tonight. So back on the trap bed now, coming from that direction. Uh, and it went off straight there, but we think that's been, well, obviously it's been raised there, but this is the retaining wall here from the side of the uh, side of the track. So going off in that direction, back to Kreitch, it's just where we, we we've actually walked quite a bit out of Kreitch, um, but it's private land mainly between here and where we were, back to that, back to the, the Kreitch tunnel around the front of the old engine shed now looking at the old doors we can't get inside and if we can peek through the hole so, bit of big uh, slab of timber above the door little mm, little holes. holes right so good shed just there just out of sight behind the trees and this would have been Chadwick Nick crossing 
straight over the road quite a quite a shallow angle straight into where that, that gate is there the other side of the crossing now so that's where we've come from Kreich and you can see you can see the trap bed going through this this gate here so again that's out of bounds can't go through there but you can you can definitely see definitely see the bank in there of, uh, of the old tramway again another hundred yards we've made our way up the line from in that direction and we've come up to what tunnel is this hag hag tunnel no. it's a, a, a tunnel <laughs> So, as you can see, it's got protective, protective bars around it, but there's the, uh, there's the top of the portal. There's the other portal to that tunnel. It's only a really short one. As you can see, it's, it's not as clear. It's got a grate over, over that side. But just past, just past the tunnel, we've got it's where we start of the uh, the incline going towards Ambergate. So the retaining wall for where the winding barrel used to sit. Right. It was a lot deeper. So the winding barrel that wound yeah. the, the trucks on the cables. The retaining wall. So this would be the top of the incline known as the steep. But more on the incline in a very short while because we've got the little business of that tunnel to investigate. Right, so we're inside the metal cage now. This is probably the most adventurous you're ever gonna see me on a video. Got the trusty light, so it's gonna go in gonna go in first. I don't know how good this light's gonna be in there. Did you go in feet first? Yeah, you can go on, that way, you better your back. Up to the drop, but I'll stop yeah. when we get to the drop, you'll be alright. I just went straight over the edge you want. You want the uh Torch yeah. first, yeah. Well, you reach. Ah, yes, it. Yeah, I've got cushion straight away, mate. You'll, you'll be right. Isn't it? So yeah, you're right here. There's just a drop where I'm stood. But you'll just pay for it. I want it. Right. So we're inside the, the tunnel now. I'm not. I'm not wedged. There's the portal. Torch is on. I don't know how good this torch is going to be. This drop is a pipe yeah. on the floor. Volkswagen Beetle uh, camper van door. Yeah. Well, I'll take your word for that. <laughs> and a seat frame or something next to it. The brickwork. Yeah, it's in good condition. Yeah, so you can see the, the sleeper indentations. And one level's bigger than another as you, as you start going. Oh, yeah. that some wood there with some bolts sticking out of it like a fence it's for operational reasons but I don't know what they are and these are little sleepers in them Look at that. Telegraph thing, isn't it? Telegraph. On a wire for some kind of system, entry tunnel maybe or something. So yeah, I'm guessing they would be. Well, I would say they probably are. Unless someone just threw them in the uh, indentation, but they look the right size, don't they? Yeah, they do, don't they? Yeah. But they do look old enough. Rotten enough, don't they, to be original? Well, if last train come through in late fifties, probably about right, I guess. Which stay on, but they're very collapsed easy. <laughs> what is that? It's a mushroom. Magic mushroom. Good girl. Well, they do say mushroom farms are usually slow and thrive, don't they? Don't they? Okay. Yeah, so you can see there that ridge, the um, half of the tunnel, I'm sorry about the light, folks. 
half of the tunnel, the, le the left hand side as we're looking down it is uh, about a good foot, foot and a half, actually more than that further up, um, more than the right hand side. Well, it's Claycross Company, because we're in Claycross Company line, aren't we? Claycross Company Britain, yeah. I've never seen one of them before. Maybe they raised... Maybe there was some flooding or something. I didn't realise that. See how it curves around, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Maybe there was flooding or something, so they they raised one side. I think it was some operational reasons that don't make sense to us, but they do when you know a lot about the operation side of inclines and things. You know. Yeah. It might have been. It might have been for trucks to free wheel a certain amount to get in uh -huh. position or something. You know, because they do loose shunting. Yeah. You know, it, might, it might be something to do with that, but we don't know which way. Is it uphill? Is it, it going ground? uphill that way? I don't know, that's what I can't really see. It, it looks like it could be dropping a bit, and maybe that one, because this is higher there, this remains actually level, whereas this one actually looks like it might be coming down. So I think it's something to do with positioning and gravity working of trucks, I think, to do with uh, top, top of the incline, I think. That's, that's what I guess. Makes kind of sense. There's no shunters here, remember? We're just winding. Just gravity and... I don't, I don't know how far the steam engines went or whether they came into this tunnel. I just don't know where they stopped at the other end. They certainly didn't go to the top, I don't think. But who, who's to say? At this end here, I don't know if those metal know, poles are, are just trying to support the portal. I don't think they are, are they? That looks nasty to get down as well compared to the other side. Yeah. Yeah, you're not coming anyway, down. Anyway, guys, that. that's, the, that's the southern portal there. Just glimpses of daylight. Can't get any closer without getting on my hands and knees there. You can see trees and daylight out the top there. Yeah, look at the that indentations in the mud there. I mean, they're not wide sleepers, are they? Another one. After about a minute, we're out for you. Come on, let's have it. This is where I get wedged. <laughs> there we go. Oh, ow, deep kneecapping myself. As you can see, grace, very graceful. There we go. Easy. <laughs> I can go in bloopers. <laughs> Cheers. So immediately after bursting out of the tunnel, the railway drops off the end of the world and this section of the line I've seen referred to as the steep. At its steepest section, the incline reads an impressive one in four. So here's a photograph from the bottom of the incline and I can tell you this photograph does not do it justice. And here's the top of the incline where we're stood at the moment. So look at that drop off there, uh, the angle of the line there just as it starts the incline. You could just about make out the ropes in this uh, in this photo. So the wagons were lowered and raised via rope with full wagons descending the incline, pulling the empty wagons back up the hill. So there's the under, other end of the tunnel. Uh, we've just been in there where them, them silver bars are. That's, that's the portal we couldn't uh, see out of. So we stood right on the cusp of the incline now, which is just going straight off down there if you can make it out through the trees but we're going to go and investigate that a bit bit more so like we've just seen before we saw the retaining wall for the winding wheel so we're right on the start of the incline now so we're in a cutting we've got a cutting look at that you can make it out as always the camera will, will flatten flatten the gradient but there it is just going straight down there I would probably say this isn't as steep as the one at Grindleford, but uh, I'll let you know when I've tried walking back up. So yeah, quite a quite a defined quite a defined cutting. So 
So believe it or not, this was this was the uh, the incline. So this would have been a cutting. It's all overgrown and, and infilled now. But we've come to the well, nearly to the bottom of it. We weren't quite at the bottom when I just said we were uh, a minute or so ago. But we've got this bridge. Also, it's, it's been infilled. We've got an arch underneath, which we're gonna have a look at. So there we go. We can see the old trap bed of the tramway there. Bloody hell, it's freezing, Lord, put your hand in there. Yeah, that is icy, isn't it? Yeah. Could have could have come down in car in, in advance and put some it's beers in there. So we're underneath that bridge now. As you can see, breeze blocked up. So if you can see anything, you won't be able to see anything. Oh, wow, you can. You can just see rubble. <laughs> Yeah, so that's well the incline, still steep, going down straight down in front there. So if I bring you back to the old photo again, take it from the foot of the incline and zoom in, we can actually see that old bridge. Not bad, not bad to look at it really. They don't need. They could have just could have knocked it down could entirely, couldn't they? Yeah. Landscape. They did plenty of rest of way, didn't they? So we're coming up to the end of the line now and this is the destination for our trucks laden with limestone. So these are the lime works at Ambergate. Industrial and imposing looking. Back in the 1840s, Stevenson invested £20,000 in the lime kilns shown in this photograph. In today's sense, £20,000 doesn't seem like a lot, but it must have been an absolute fortune in 1840. This National Library of Scotland map probably illustrates the scale of the works best. Our tramway is seen entering from the top. The lime works are long gone these days, although the land was used as a British gas plant. Right, so that's it for today, folks. I've had an absolutely brilliant time, so I really can't pick a favourite part of today. I loved trying to trace and, uh, and find all those little bits in, uh, in Kreitch, in the little town, just to link it all together. And then going in that tunnel, that was a, that was a great experience. Um, just in front of this little old tunnel. So this is going to be the scene for my next video. So this is the, the disused Cromford Canal. So I won't give too much away. But yeah, keep a lookout for that video coming very very soon so cheers to um, cheers to philip he's just minding the car while i jumped out and filmed this uh, appreciate you bringing me out here i'd have never have found all this so amazing um so yeah i'll see you soon take care and uh, and thanks for watching